<laughs> All right, what's up, people? Welcome back to our channel, Tequesta Jones Media. And I am Living Ishe Reviews, and this is The Akala Yogi. And we're back with another video, and we're going to review Married at First Sight, Season 14, Episode 6 or 9. Was Six. it? Six. We <laughs> got the right season. Okay. All right. Let's get right into it. <laughs> so let's see. The, the show starts off with um, showing all the couples waking up together, except for. Wait for it. You know who? Chris and Alyssa. <laughs> because Alyssa is 30 going on 12. Um, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> You know, even Mark and Lindsay woke up together, you know, because they had that makeup sex, you know, because last episode they got into a little spat and it looked like they was done for. But, you know, the camera showed us, you know, hey, somebody said some something, something and um, somebody apologized. Somebody apologized. Someone and she said, it. are you going to sleep down here? Or are you coming upstairs? Heck no. <laughs> Let's go, boo. So, yeah, Mark and Lindsay, they've been, they've been consummated, consummated on top of consummation. They should be having, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have a uh, announcement in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, but it's funny they uh, just now asking each other about religious preferences, you know, because they was having breakfast and um, they was going, they was talking about stuff and Mark said, suggested they pray. So they did a little prayer and then he was like, so are you religious? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's funny because they've been married for what, three days? <laughs> a week now. <laughs> a week. About six days. And then, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is, but, you know, um, so she says that she grew up Greek Orthodox. And uh, so then they have a discussion about kids. And I just said they had <laughs> makeup sex. And uh, yeah, they might there might be some kids in the picture. But I think uh, I think they're going to make it. What do you think? When you initially had said that to me, I was like, really? After that whole debacle last week about plugging the toilets and farting. <laughs> like that was, yeah. that, Those were so vicious and unnecessary below the belt remarks that I was like, what would make them come back when it's gotten this ugly so soon? But turns out you were right. Um, and uh, yeah, they were able to squash it, forgive, forget, move <clears throat> forward, which is what marriage is about. Um, in order for them to, you know, maintain the course on which they both want to remain on. So I do. I think I think these two will last. They they seem to really balance each other out. Yeah, balance. You know, that's what a relationship is. Balance. Speaking of balance, how's your boon? Uh, let's see. Lovely as always. <laughs> All right. So we see. Uh, like, I think Chris is going to really get annoyed. And I felt it from the beginning of the show. It's like, uh, he's, he's like, he's still, he really likes this, this woman, Alyssa. But he's getting, he, he seemed to be annoyed. So, anyway. The, but barely. Barely what? Barely annoyed. Oh. Well, he's not mad. <laughs> when he gets like, mad, it's, it's, it's going to be a done deal. But I don't think that's going to happen. He's such a good good dude but i thought it was uh you know these little um recreation little things that the show does like uh you know how they go on these excursions mm -hmm. so these couples they go uh horseback riding oh yeah and you know when they mention horseback riding elijah wine says to uh um katina oh yeah we're gonna see if she can ride a real horse <laughs> Oh, man, you know, Olajuwon is always, <laughs> he never missed the opportunity for some innuendo. <laughs> he sure doesn't. But it's cute that um, Katina is uh, complaining on a horse. <laughs> she's doing a horseback riding, and she's complaining the whole time. She's such a girly girl. She's tough, but she's still a girly yeah, girl, you know. she is. Um, she, you know, with her long flowing hair. and Gorgeous smile. 
Yeah. And uh, but the thing is, is Olajuwon is getting her out of her comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And that's important for a uh, relationship, too. I think getting the other out of their comfort zone, showing them new stuff, new things, um, as long as it's not too radical, you know, I don't say they will be like parasailing or skydiving just yet, but I'm sure that's in uh, Elijah Wan's <laughs> near future for them. All right. So, yeah, what else? I, you know what I like about Elijah Wan is he's on 100 all the time. <laughs> all the time. And he's positive. You know, he's, uh, but he's really patient with his woman, but he still pushes her. But he's patient, but he still pushes. Even though she gives that look, you know, that look that y'all give when the side eye, <laughs> when like we should notice, but we don't. It's like, you, you effing up right now. You fucking up. I'm also, you fucking up right now. <laughs> so they, uh, you know, that's funny that he, he does that with her. And um, I think, He's a natural coach, and he's her coach, but she wants him to slow it down. <laughs> she wants him to slow down a long, the long way. Slow down. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but you know, with with him and her, like they haven't had sex yet. You reckon, and, really? Well, from what they say, let's go with the narrative. She says she gonna make him wait a month. She, she got two weeks that. left. Two weeks left, right? Or well, three? I think three. Okay, so three weeks left. And I think, like, the way he is on 100, and the more he pushes her and pushes her, even though she don't want to do it, I think if they have sex, <laughs> it's going to be like that. It would be, be like, she probably, like, imagine it as she's going to be scared to have sex with him because he might be pushing. <laughs> pushing and she'd be like, hey, can you slow down a little bit? And he's like, no, you can take it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Just Not you can take it. Oh I mean, because that's what he was doing when they was horseback oh, riding. Was... He was like, oh, they don't, that horse don't need to slow down. You can take it. You can ride. <laughs> oh, God. I hope that's not how he is in the bedroom. I mean, you know, I mean, he just seems like, you know, that, that type, that energy, could you know. Be. I mean, he could be, like, doing a lot. And she'd be like, I don't, I'm not, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, it's okay, you can handle it. <laughs> put, put your feet up this way, or <laughs> something like that. All right, enough, uh, large, all right, let's move <laughs> on to Chris and Alyssa again. So now they actually start playing tennis together because Alyssa mm-hmm. don't want to ride horses, and I don't know if Chris does either, but I think tennis is more his speed, which is, you know, it's cool. He's, you know, he's a... He seems like a refined, you know, young man. So, anyways, they playing tennis together, and mm-hmm. you know, uh, she didn't really want to play at first. She didn't want to participate in anything. And then I think I don't know if it was Reverend Kyle or what's her name? What's the other one? You mean Pastor Calvin? <laughs> Pastor <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> And I got to get some more of this car. Oh, my God. This boom. All right. <laughs> so, Pastor Kyle. And who else? What's the other oh, one? Oh, uh, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. And <laughs> what's the other young one? Viviana. Viviana. So, anyway, one of them or all three of them said, look, <laughs> the rules of the show is you need to participate. We, do we got to remind you the rules again? Do something. <laughs> Can you just follow the rules, please? Follow the rules. Do something. <laughs> just, you know, this is a process and you messing up our money, <laughs> our ad revenue. <laughs> so anyway, she does it begrudgingly. That's my new word for 22. <laughs> begrudgingly. She does it. And uh, so after that, <clears throat> Chris tries to have a conversation with her. As he has for the last <laughs> every episode, he's been trying to have a conversation with her, and she does not want to have any sort of conversation, or she will create a conflict. <laughs> he can just say, "Hi, how you doing? You yelling at me? Why are you yelling at me?" <laughs> he said, "Create conflict." <laughs> I'm telling you, this 
She is loony, loony tunes. I'm telling you, like, if you don't like the man, you could at least you sign a contract. Just go with it. <laughs> go with the flow. Don't create conflict. Yeah, she's creating things. So <laughs> anyway, they have a conversation and she's trying to, uh, she's fighting it so hard <laughs> not to get along with this guy. I think it's so funny. It's like my son. He's just, yes. when he don't want to do something, he's just like, Probably even if it's curious. fun, when he when he's in a bad mood, he just, it could be like a whole bunch of fun stuff right here. You say, oh, look at that fun stuff. And he'd be like, nope. <laughs> but anyway, that's how she is. That's what I said. She's going on 12. <laughs> so anyway, I'd want a refund if I was Chris. I want my money back. <laughs> I want, y'all got to find me days. a new one. Yeah. So then, um, <clears throat> But they're having this conversation, and it's just like barely nothing. He's like, what do you think about the process? <laughs> that that triggers her already. Like, he can't even breathe without He's triggering her down. to be mad. <laughs> anyway, they're having this conversation, and she stops him in mid-conversation to say she tried to go along with the process. She never tried to do anything, right? Right. What do you think? I haven't seen, I've yet to see anything yet I mean, lady. and she is just like she is just so roguish like she's like she even admitted she feels robbed that's what she <laughs> said in front of this man like this woman is something is wrong with her for real i don't I know but she used that word more than once yeah We've both been robbed of this experience but she's not even bothered to ask chris if he feels that way and but, clearly he doesn't well, you know what the conversation was about. Okay, so after the honeymoon, you know we got to move into an apartment. And she was like, ah! You know, that, that made her angry. All he was trying to was trying to ask is, how are we going to do this? You know? And she was like, so she just gaslighting. You know, she just, you know, she's saying that he, oh, she was talking to the production staff. She was saying that he already made up in his mind that he's going to move in without her. <laughs> all he said was he we got to move in and she didn't even want to finish the conversation well she actually said i don't feel comfortable with that oh right <laughs> right y'all married y'all on the show these apartments always have two bedrooms at the least mm -hmm. like she don't even want to stay in separate beds she don't even just want to be in the same <laughs> area like square footage with him yeah and it's been like this every single day from their wedding night to the, their honeymoon, to their plane ride where she did not want to sit with, next to her husband as well. Oh, apparently. yeah. They couldn't even sit together on a plane. He couldn't even get her phone number. Right. She did admit that. Uh, <laughs> no, he admitted that uh, after they got married on that episode, he was like, so can I have your phone number? She was like, I know where to find you. <laughs> how you, how you not going to get, <laughs> you can't even get a guy your phone number? Like, what is he going to do? <laughs> This is so dismissive. <laughs> how is you? How are you trying? There's not. You could not possibly find a level more dismissive than where you are at currently. <laughs> I mean, she's saying she made up stuff in his mind. She making up everything in her mind. Like he was trying to ask her about it, and she shut it down. You know, it seems like um, <laughs> he was like he was pressuring her to follow the show rules. Like, and I don't know what's up with this production crew. Why don't they, like, getting their ass and be like, look, <laughs> you need to... <laughs> Time is money. Yeah. What are we doing here? Are you on the show or are you going home? You know, get off the pot if you're not yes. going to pee. We might be able to get another couple still. It's early enough in the season. Why are you taking us space and time? <laughs> I know. I mean, it's the process. Has she not watched this show? Oh, she's watched the show, but she's entitled. And she believes that she can waste people's time. Not to mention energy, um, Chris's emotional energy, which she's completely sucking out of this poor man. She is sucking the life out of him, and he he, 100%. but he likes it because he likes her. Like he's he, smitten. Yeah, he thinks the experts got it right for him, and <laughs> she thinks the opposite. The experts got it wrong, you know. And she's making up other stuff. Like she was saying to the production, "Look at him. He's so aggressive." <laughs> <laughs> He's pointing. He's pointing. Look how he's pointing. <laughs> Look at the hand gestures. They're aggressive. Yeah. 
I mean, all he's doing is reaching out for something. And she's like, that's aggressive. He's such an asshole. She's oh so repulsed God. that she's literally fabricating things. No one was looking out for that. Where, where did that statement even come from? He's so aggressive. Everyone was in mid-conversation. She was looking around searching for something problematic and then couldn't find anything and poof. Yeah, she, it's all <laughs> like this is a classic case of it's all in your head. But she would be like, oh, you're gaslighting when it is in your head. Oh, you're trying to say it's in my head? I, you can see how he, he tries to catch the ball all aggressive. Anyway, she's a brat. That's it. I mean, she's just making herself look like an idiot. So um, she convinced herself that she hates him to where, you know, even him just breathing bothers her. <laughs> she, He's he, so aggressive. He can't, he can't walk and chew gum. Without it being too much. Look what he's trying to do. <laughs> right. All right. So uh, uh, let's go back to Lindsay and Mark. So she's not. Uh, so she really cares for this guy because, you know, uh, Mark's landlord calls him in the middle of their honeymoon to tell him, tell him that she changed the lease. Well, apparently repeatedly. Not, <clears throat> oh. not just the one time. Yeah. Because but daily. Yeah, the landlord is is like his mother figure. So she kind of like thinks that, you know, she owns him, I guess. And Lindsay ain't having it. She's like, you got to get out of that situation. And, and she's like just 100 on board with him. She's like, you can move your stuff out of that place and just mm -hmm. move with me. Like, I don't think that's happened on any of these seasons where <laughs> somebody's like, we just, just move in. You know, it might have been from the guy to the woman, but not from the woman to the guy. So... Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder what he's going to do because he seems like a, a man's man, you know. He don't seem like he, he need a woman to take care of him or, or you know, help him out. And um, the fact that she did this, it makes him feel weird. So I think, yeah, he seemed like a solid dude, you know. Um, he might be in a bind, but it won't last for long. You know, she can help him out, you know, but I don't think he'll like that <clears throat> long term. I think he would want to find his own place and have him move in, you know. And, mm -hmm. and these two, they... What they have in common is they're both cat lovers. Mm. That's that's kind of yeah. I mean, if you y'all love cats, I don't like cats, but if y'all like cats, then y'all must be meant for each other. Okay, so let's go to Mike and Jasmine. <clears throat> but wait, first I just want to say your opinion of Mark has changed quite a bit since the very beginning. Do you remember what you used to think of him? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm liking Mark um, more and more because it and now. I, I could be like Alyssa on this one. I was just basing on his looks. He just reminds me of one of them them uh, cops that pull you over and just give you <laughs> <A hard time. laughs> Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what he does. But yeah. I've um, already I just assumed he was a cop after that. <laughs> I mean, he's got that, you know, the high top cut and he's clean shaven and all mm -hmm. that stuff like a cop. So. But anyway, he's he's a good guy, and I'm not trying to bash cops. I'm just saying he seems like not one of the good ones, like when I first saw him. But he, like, he was, you know, I am kind of, I am kind of like just judging a book by his cover, which is wrong, because he was engaging with everybody when they first um, met, like all the guys, mm -hmm. you know, and he didn't seem like he had any issues with nobody, mm -hmm. and he always encourages his wife not to start. <laughs> it's, don't uh, start with nothing people. won't be nothing right <laughs> okay so Mike and Jasmine Jasmina so uh, Mike is saying all the wrong things that's the usual <laughs> he's starting off wrong I mean he says that they both uh, are rooted in their convictions and uh Okay, let's start that over. Mark is saying all the wrong things. <laughs> he is starting off wrong <laughs> already. That's crazy. Yes. And he, I mean, instead of saying that, instead of admitting he's wrong, he's just saying, oh, we're both rooted in our convictions. Like, whatever we think, that's what we think. And we're not giving each other uh, any leeway to think otherwise. And instead of just saying, you know what, I... She's teaching me a new way of thinking, and I've been, I think I've been coming wrong a few times, you know, 
few of our uh, spats. <clears throat> but he's just trying to say they both have strong opinions. So, um, like, his, he's saying, like, her point of view is just her standing strong in her belief, not the fact that she's right. Mm. And a lot of time, uh, when he's not right, but he thinks he is, so he's that's, that's what he does. He stands strong when he thinks he's right. Instead of admitting, <clears throat> you know what? Maybe I could look at it a different way. Right. I think he did one time, mm. kind of like... <clears throat> when? Um, okay, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> I don't know, but it seemed like at one time they was having a, a little thing and he was kind of looking at it like I kind of understand, but then again, he didn't really take her advice on it. So It must have been short-lived because even next week's preview sh shows Jasmina saying <clears throat> something about... You cannot speak to me any kind of way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he so is. So it's still an ongoing <clears throat> issue. Yeah, he definitely has a, a bit of an ego, you know, but he blames it on his uh, life struggles, you know. So he's saying that he, uh, her belief is stronger than the truth, basically. <laughs> and Just pretty condescending. Yeah. Um, that's not going to, long term, this ain't going to work. Like, <laughs> it, <clears throat> this is not going to work. Not unless there was some major work put in. Yeah. Like Mike specifically. They need a lot Sorry. of work and counseling. Um, so uh, then they go back to Lindsay. So uh, at first I thought with the mom landlord, but it's mother figures, not his real mom. Because right. I think his mom is dead oh. or died or passed away. But um, I could be wrong, but I don't think he has a mother um, living right now. So I was thinking she was overstepping step, her boundaries, but she wasn't. She, I think she was in her right because that uh, was kind of rude of that landlord to do that. So um, <clears throat> let's go back to Alyssa. <laughs> Jeez. So they keep going back and forth between people, and then they, they're back at Alyssa. Now she's claiming she's stuck, and now she's worried about her, her appearance and how she's perceived on TV. Straight Looney Tunes. Because she she's a Looney. very good person. Yeah, she said, I'm a very good person, like five or six times on that on that one episode. And uh, she keep downplaying them. Like, you know, this guy is a successful uh, real estate guy. And she's like, you know what he is? He's a car salesman who sells houses. Like, she said that? That's what she said to the production staff. <clears throat> All right. So, she's I mean, a bit elitist as well. Yeah. I mean, she, she's calling him disrespectful and rude. Mm -hmm. She called him a eye hole. <laughs> I mean, what did he do? What she complains do? about being... Um, His only fault is that he does not look like Brad Pitt. Yeah, or... you know, But he's not ugly. It's just to say he's not, you know, the most attractive person out there, but he's far from unattractive and ugly. So would you... Would you no. Get, no. <laughs> you wouldn't date him? I wouldn't. Not even, not even if he was the last man on earth. Uh, okay. But well, it's no offense to him. <laughs> okay, but he's a nice guy. And he has means. And he's successful. And he's nice to her. And he likes her. Like, she's probably just going to keep getting the same thing she's been going after before <clears throat> with the same results. Right? So she's not going to learn. Um so, I mean, she's complaining about not being able to move in that, that apartment <laughs> because she's like, just because we can't be together don't mean I can't spend time with my friends because I really like all the girls. Like, she just want to be a permanent third leg to everybody's relationship. It's like she doesn't hear the words that come out of her mouth. I don't want to miss out on the experience <clears throat> of being able to hang out with the girls. So I'll move in for the second half and you move in for the first half. It's like she has absolutely no clue what the show is about. She's just here for the for the fun of it now. She's just here for the ride. Yeah, I, I mean, I wonder, like, did she act... I, I don't know if she's seen the episodes, but yeah, she acted... She's acting, acting so brand new. I'm just... It's baffling to me that she doesn't hear the words coming out of her mouth. So the there's no romance, we know that, but that doesn't mean we both can't appreciate and enjoy this flat. Well, okay, you just admitted then. There's no chance. Yeah. What are, what are you doing here? Yeah, I mean, why does she think she can move into a, <laughs> a, a marital apartment alone? Marital. You know, even he's like, 
we're not going to share no apartment like uh, divorced parents with a child. Like she's she's really suggesting that they split the time of the show in half to where she'll move. <laughs> she'll be in an apartment <laughs> for half the time and then he'll come in. Like she's not thinking of all the production, the show, <laughs> this, what they trying to get through. They really trying to get people to know that this is a process and that it can work. Like she's just all like, this is her and this is how she think. <laughs> she's just self-centered. Um, so yeah, I mean, he never said that, that he didn't want her to move in. The fact that he wants to move in, she's thinking that she don't, he don't want her to move in. I mean, you know, she just stones, stone walls all, all the time. Like that's childish. So. And it's infuriating to watch, to be honest with you, because it's a level, it's, it's such an extreme level of mental illness, like no shade, not being funny. Right. I mean, I think strangers on a train ride had more conversation, in-depth conversation than they had. Yeah. Like you can just be in line at a checkout at, <laughs> at right. the grocery store and learn more about a person yep. than she's learned about him. It's happened to me many times, Trader Joe's, many, many, many times. <laughs> so they even, um, now they're like doing separate things now. Like Chris and Alyssa, they had like a little get together, <laughs> a little party. Like Chris invited um, uh, Alyssa and Mark. You know, Lindsay to his, and Mark. Lindsay and Mark. And Alyssa invited Katina, Katina and Jasmine, Jasmina. and uh I can't just, just Moy? Mina. No, just it was. Oh, just, just those two. And yeah. Katina. And uh, <clears throat> you know, Alyssa, <clears throat> she said she put <laughs> she said, I put in all the effort everyone else has. Where? I know she just, just like those aggressive gestures, we're waiting to see them. If you could just produce them, as you would say, and take them out of your head and put them up for the rest of us to see. His words, not mine. Yeah. We'd all be very grateful. Everything she's talking about <laughs> is conjured in her head, and nobody else knows what's going on but her. Like, it's her world. <laughs> so what? whatever she thinks is what's happening. Right. It's not really reality. I think she should be on meds. Like, she's <laughs> crazy. She is really crazy. Like, I mean, all she did was listen to his friends without verifying <laughs> With him, Who are she listens to everybody <laughs> else around him, but him. By the way, his friends are losers, and I think I've said this before. This is a time for him to do what? Reevaluate some friendships. He needs to <laughs> definitely uh, reevaluate his friendship <laughs> with these people because they really put him out there. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, she already made her decision at the beginning. Like yeah. Katina said, you made your decision, and <laughs> nothing's going to change that. And uh, even Jasmine is looking at her like, <laughs> girl, you lost your mind. Like, something's wrong with you. Um, you know, what I say about Alyssa. Wait, if, can I just say that's the thing about two black girls is that they're always going to let you have it. They let, they let Alyssa have it in a very nice and polite way, but they were not going to take her BS, sugarcoated. They delivered it and, and, you know, let Alyssa know that, no, you checked out of this. The moment you saw him at the end of the aisle, that was when you checked out. Yeah, yeah. When she first saw him sitting up, standing up there, mm -hmm. and she was like, "That ain't what I ordered." Y'all got me a husband from Wish, not from <laughs> from eBay or something. Right. You know, if judging a book by its cover were a person, that would be Alyssa. Hundred percent. And we've all done it to a degree for sure, but then we didn't sign up. For a show like this where you kind of have agreed to take on whatever is handed to you and give it a genuine try Because obviously what you've done has not benefited you and so you need to try something else, right? So when you sign up for this kind of an experience You know, I would expect a little bit more maturity decorum um, Effort <laughs> yeah effort. I mean you sign a contract that you're gonna do this so do what you say you're going to do mm -hmm. and get it over with. Like, then life goes on. Like, right. she's up here pouting for no reason. And trying to have her cake and eat it too, which is like drain, emotionally drain Chris more than she has, which she has done so already immensely. And 
um, and take up space. Take up space. That's not even rightfully hers because she has made the decision already, even though she's not verbalized it. But she has made the, de the decision. She's not considering at all giving this, this marriage a chance. Yeah. Leave then. <clears throat> You're finished. That's yeah. it. This show is only about this one thing. It's not about, oh, I just want to hang out with my girlfriends and talk about their, <laughs> their husbands yeah. and their relationships and their marriages. Yeah, that's not of, what the show is called. That's not the premise. Remember, one of the um, producers was like, "It's called Married at First Sight, not Single at First Sight." <laughs> so that's what she's trying and to have. And he's black. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, you know, you know he's black. Black people don't mince words. <laughs> you know. We always he just told her like, "Give it to you." Need to hear. Yeah. So it's it's like you know even level headed Mark said Chris needs to let it go. <laughs> he was like, "You just," and his sister. Mark said, let it go. <laughs> Chris's sister said, cut yeah. your loss. Get out of there. Get out. Run. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Don't turn back. Oh, my God. All right. So, uh, back. Then they go back to Mike and Jasmina. Yeah, again, he's going down the wrong road. <laughs> wrong road. He seems like, I don't know, to me, like, I was, I would liked him from the beginning, but now I'm kind of not liking him as much because... He seems like he loves sympathy. Like he likes hmm. he likes the attention of being the sad thing. I mean, they, they went to these rocks and it was like a stream. It's nice and romantic for the, just the two of them. Then he starts talking about a story where he got bullied oh, as a child. That. And it was like he got beat up and stuff. You know, he's like a little elementary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... Why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is this could be a really romantic, tender, sweet moment. Right. Sexy moment even. And you're not you're not looking good to the queen, you know? <laughs> you just you're looking real sad right now. Like why is everything doom and gloom? It's like he got a a, a cloud following him. Like schlep rock. <laughs> like there's always a rain cloud following him. He's like just <laughs> pouting off. That's mad. Him and Alyssa might make a good couple. <laughs> they're both miserable. Yeah, they, there, there it is. Miserable. I mean, at first I was like, oh, he's trying to be vulnerable. But then I was like, man, this ain't the time. Like, what is wrong with him? He got this beautiful girl alone. They in the woods, you know. Uh -huh. He's taking all her pictures. She's going to post on Instagram. <clears throat> <laughs> all her nice pictures. And he's talking that about the sad the stuff. Yeah. She's in a cute little bikini. This is the time to get close and intimate and flirty. I know. And instead, he wants to bring sadness and heaviness to the moment. I didn't even catch this part, but I feel like I can still comment on it. Yeah. He is, uh, I mean, yeah, they're in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. And they have such, I mean, this is an experience they need to, you know, they can make it really special. But anyway, I, I don't think they, yeah, I think they had their best moments, like, on their balcony before they came outside or something. So uh, then, they, okay, so now they they uh, go to when everybody assembles together for dinner. Wait, we've not spoken of um, Moy and Noy and Steve. Noy and Moy? Moy Noy and Steve. She's now um, Noy Moy. Noy that's Moy. Steve Moy's last name. But yeah, we didn't talk about those two. Oh. They went to the was it waterfalls or they something? They went. Yeah, they also went to like some rocks and there was a yeah something river. similar. But they had a more romantic time. Yeah, that was a romantic time they had together. You know, he was he uh, got her out of her comfort zone. Yeah, got her in the water. He said, "Trust me." He's holding her up. He said, "Trust me." Lean your head back, yeah. and she did it. And you know, they kissed a they lot kissed and, and till this um, fish. Grabbed him right. by the toe and <laughs> ruined the moment. Mike, you could have learned from what Steve did there. Yeah. You see how he was able to get close. I mean, yeah. To his wife and get a kiss and everything. I mean, Mike that could have been you, but Mike instead could, you wanted to talk about something sad. <laughs> Mike could learn from Steve. All the guys, right? Him. Yeah, he can learn. He can even learn from Chris. <laughs> he can learn <laughs> something from everybody. Chris. I don't think he's he's ready. What's up? Oh, I have some tea for you. Okay. I'm out of boon, but. <laughs> All um, right. So, um, if you notice during that scene, actually, Steve has a tattoo of a lion on his chest. Did you notice that? Yeah. Okay. So, it's, it's quite a detailed uh, tattoo. So, anyways, apparently, the psychic that Alyssa went to see did not tell her that she was going, that her soulmate had a, an eagle. 
the psychiatrist, or sorry, the psychiatrist. <coughs> psychic. The psychic. The psychic <coughs> told her that her soulmate had a big tattoo of a lion. She, on camera, she said eagle because it had upset Noi that the psychic said that her <laughs> that Alyssa's soulmate had a lion since oh, that's Alyssa's husband. Oh, since, no. since that's Noi's husband. Stop. Stop the presses. Hold on. True Stop story. everything. True so, story. That's why Alyssa's mad because Noi got her mad. <laughs> she got. She, got she thinks Steve's noticed. supposed to be here too. Yeah, Chris was supposed to be with her and yeah. she's supposed to be with Steve. Because according to her psychic, oh she her soulmate has a tattoo of a line. She only changed it in front of the cameras. So, I mean, the psychic was right about one thing. So she did see a guy with a line tattoo, <laughs> but it wasn't her guy. <laughs> all right, so... All right, so then everybody had their little excursions and, and you know, things. And then they get to dinner. And then um, everybody's talking about, who wants kids? And Chris goes. <laughs> and and I'll do Alyssa. Like, oh, yeah, she's not even paying attention. He goes, <laughs> oh, my God. So everyone was like, we want two to three. Seems like the consensus was everybody wants two to three kids. I think somebody wanted like five. Was it Katina was saying that? I don't remember. Yeah, she seemed like she wanted a big family. Um, but I think everybody was trying to show um, at this dinner. Like, I think all the couples was trying to, trying to, you know, do something good for Chris by showing Alyssa like everybody's not perfect. Like right. all our all our um, relationships, right. we work on, and we're not perfect. But and... we show up every day, <clears throat> converse, <clears throat> spend time together, participate in. You know, in activities, sleep in the same room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's trying to learn right. about each other, at least trying. And it's not easy no matter how it looks on the outside. Even Steve and Moy have they things, but, you know, they still work at it. They still get to know each other. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder, I mean, I think everybody, all the couples were initially attracted to their person. Except for except Alyssa. for Los Angeles. but you know that I don't think everybody was somebody they normally date either, right? Because even um, Lindsay said that, yeah. And I think um, was it Katina? Yeah, I can't see Katina with a light skinned guy to be honest. If had they not been matched, mm. light skinned and potentially biracial, I don't see that for her. Uh, had she chosen herself, but it's it's good to try other things, and even yeah. with um, Yasmina. I can't see that she would have dated a guy like uh, Mike. Because yeah. she looks like a model. Both Katina and um, Jasmina are stunning. Stunning, like both of yeah. them. You know, model types. Um, so they really can have their choice yeah. in men, especially in a city like Boston. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it was funny that at the table, it was like, when, just when I thought they had a little something, like there was a little hope. Because Chris and Alyssa, they kind of protected each other when they right. was asking questions. They was like, oh, we're good. We, yeah. We're trying to make it work. But that was just Alyssa trying to make herself look good in front of the whole group. But off camera, she's saying a total different thing. And then in front of uh, Mike, I oh, know, Chris, she's saying another thing. So she's got like three faces. <laughs> well, she's saying negative things to the... Uh, Production, production and him. Well, mm -hmm. she's not even really talking to him. So. Barely, <laughs> barely can she say two words to this man. So yeah, I thought I thought they was about to you know have a breakthrough, but you know he. But Chris is looking for her to be direct, and that's not going to happen. Like you women are not direct, like a lot of y'all. Even if y'all are a direct person, like with the person, mm -hmm. the guy, y'all won't be direct until y'all get real. Well, she's mad, but she's she yeah. She's just something else, man. Anyway. She's uh, special. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm i just, like, tripping on the fact that she wants to, to live in an apartment half the time <laughs> in what, the second. again? She wants the first half. <laughs> or, no, she wants she the wants second half. second half. half. And he got the first half because ain't that fun. So what's she going to be doing? She tied. That just don't make no sense. It ain't even worth it. There's discussing. another show for you, Alyssa. Since clearly you want to be on the telly, this is not it. You've taken yeah. up two people's uh, place here. 
I don't would have know. probably given it a real go. Yeah. So anyway, let's see. Chris makes it uh, plain. Either you in or you out. <laughs> so, and he's like, question. I'm not doing that BS half and half. We're not doing that, you know. Um, and then she wants to, uh, she wants to compromise because of the problems they having. The problems they having. <laughs> Who's having the problems? She's having the only problem. Show us the problems, please. <laughs> yeah, take, can you take them out of your head so everybody else can see these problems? We would also just like to see them. Yeah, and then she's like, he's trying to make me look bad. No, you're doing it on your own. You I don't mean, need anyone's help, baby girl. I promise right. you. I mean, he's willing to give 99% to her 1%. And then when somebody calls her out on her BS, she gets defensive and play the victim. Karen in the making. <sighs> now she's forced Chris to uh, put it out in front of everybody because she won't talk to him alone. So now, now he's like... This is the conversation. This is the only time I can get you to even stay around long enough for me to say something. Right, because she does walk away from many, many, many a conversations. Yeah. I mean, she's trying to look good mm. in front of the cast. Right. Um, she's uh, on her best behavior this time. Yeah, I mean, even Elijah Wan calls her out on uh, her behavior. Cut. Okay, we got to kind of wrap it like 45. So okay. Gotta... <laughs> All right. Let's go. Even Elijah calls her out on her BS. Yeah. I mean, Elijah I'm I'm starting I'm to like surprised. him too. Yeah. Yeah. That observant actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mark is uh, uh you know, proud and Mark is proud of Lindsay right. for listening to him and not right. going off on Alyssa. <laughs> so that's showing like she really right. likes this guy. Yeah. Um. Alyssa, Alyssa is all about experience versus the process. She she wants the experience, but she don't want the process. Because she doesn't want to be married to this man, but she does want to hang out with the girls who are married now and want to be with their husbands. Yeah, she wants to tag along. Like Maybe you guys kid. can shoot another show afterwards. <laughs> I know. She <laughs> wants to be the on the spinoff. Yeah. <laughs> Alyssa, keep, she keep getting caught in a lie. Like, you know, when when remember when... uh. Okay, well, Chris was having a discussion with her, uh -huh. saying, uh, what is it that we talked about? And she <laughs> couldn't think about it. She couldn't think of anything like they had really had a discussion about. She's like, we, we always have discussions or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from me. When a woman has a beef with you about something, she's keeping it so close to the front of her head that nothing will allow that to fall out. Never could she forget. So for her to have stumbled on those words lets you know there's either nothing or if there was something, it's so minuscule that it went all the way back here, right? Where to, we don't care. Yeah, because you guys don't forget nothing. No, we don't. Y'all got way better memories <laughs> than us. God made yeah. us that way. Yeah. Because you know why? To keep men in check. <laughs> so we could call you guys out. Yeah, I mean. We are here. Keep us straight. To keep, exactly. That's our... He, yeah, he I mean, she's like, <laughs> look at the way he's talking to me. Like he wasn't talking to her any kind of way. He was even kill conversation all the, the time. He's time. never raised his voice. She's like, he's raising his voice at me. He's aggressive. I'm a good person. Look at the gestures. I'm a good. <laughs> look how aggressive that was. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> and uh, to wrap it up. <laughs> What did, what did we think about this episode? It was an excellent episode, uh, especially the bits about Alyssa and Chris. Phenomenal. So, shoot, let's rate it, let's rate it shall we? Shall we? Yeah. I'll I give think, it a solid nine. Yeah, I'll give it a nine. This episode was pretty good. It was great. A lot of stuff came out. Yep. And um, I'm actually enjoying the, uh, the ridiculousness of uh, Alyssa. Like, I just... I, can't wait to see what she comes up with <laughs> next, like every episode now. Thank you, Alyssa. You make for great content. I know. But this, get help. Yeah, because she's the Chris of this season from... Uh, Chris in Atlanta. Yeah. he was also a little bit yeah, off his was, rocker. He was touched. Okay, uh, that's it for <laughs> our review and recap of... Married at First Sight. Season 14, episode 5. Come back episode next six. week. Episode six. <laughs> All right, everybody, come back next week and we discuss episode seven.
Peace out. Stay decent. <laughs> <laughs>